Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a distinct pleasure to be able to speak to you this afternoon. Not only do you represent some of America's brightest hopes, but as some of you may recall, I've had some trouble attending this reception <laughs> in the past. Two years ago, I'd have had to be wheeled in on a stretcher, and uh, last year I had to bow out in order to make a television appeal for the Congress to hold the line on spending and taxes. I should be doing that now, too. <laughs> this year, I decided not even the 20 mule team 20 mule team from Borax could keep me away. And I've had some familiarity with that mule team. But I'm delighted to host you here in the garden because I've been a supporter of the White House Fellowships Program for a long time. Before coming to Washington, it was my pleasure as governor of California to meet with a number of classes who were visiting Sacramento. I see a head shaking out there. <laughs> and uh, I always found those meetings very, very stimulating. I know the selection process for this program is rigorous and competitive. You all made the grade and you're to be congratulated for it. But this program is not only a valuable experience for you, it's also a considerable benefit to us in government. You bring us your talents, ideas, and enthusiasm, freshening our approaches and broadening our thinking. Of course, White House fellowships also develop America's future leaders and are a symbol of the individual character, strength, and potential that we can draw on. From the reports I get, the current class of fellows is making a significant contribution this year. Some 20 former fellows have returned to work in the administration, many of them in senior positions. Six worked with the private sector survey group to help us reduce government waste and inefficiency and another 30 are serving as officers in our armed forces. So as you can see, this administration is already getting a return for its investment in the White House fellows, and so is the country. I hope that your lives have been enriched by your experiences with us and that your horizons have been widened. By now, you should have both a healthy skepticism about the limits of government and a new appreciation of the good that can result from sound programs and policies. I also hope you have a renewed respect for democracy. It's a frustrating and sometimes chaotic system, <laughs> but with all its defects, it's still the best form of government that's ever been devised. And bear in mind that your time here, those of you who are here now, is only a beginning. Thanks to it, you can return to your communities, aware of the special opportunities that you've been given in the hopes that your country has pinned on the future. You can make your local government work, help those less fortunate than yourself, and dedicate yourselves to preserving the great legacy of liberty that has been entrusted to you and your generation, whichever generation that might be, because freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Every generation has to protect it, defend it, and pass it on to the next generation. Well, again, I'm proud to be associated with this White House program, and I welcome you back to the White House, and I'm glad that we're finally able to get together for one of these alumni get-togethers. Uh, either way, this is better than what I was doing the last two years. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. President, as President of the White House Fellows Alumni Association, it is my privilege to present to you a copy of the symbol of the White House Fellows Association in gratitude and appreciation for all that you've done for the program, both as governor and as president. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, again. I see that the refreshments are still there, and enjoy yourselves. And, uh, it's been a great joy to be with you. Thank you.